There is a place where dreams come true. A place where people become legends. Where moments become unforgettable memories. Where time stands still. A place where the eyes of the world are watching history, waiting to be made. We call it WrestleMania. And after 40 years, the stage has never been this electrifying. Welcome to Promo Mania 9, Night 2. It's Thursday, it's WrestleMania week, and you know what that means. Welcome to Night 2 of the ninth Annual Promo Mania. This is your captain speaking, along with El Jefe, and as you can see, the man they call beer. I'm outnumbered by the tag team champions. Darn Putin, Ross Putin. So, of course, coming up, we have WrestleMania 40 XL, if you will. Predictions for Saturday and Sunday. Will Cody Rhodes finally finish his godforsaken story? Chris Reed will go one-on-one with the man they call the podcast machine, Mark Larkin, for the first time ever in promo exhibition. Also, will the captain's open challenge be answered tonight? And lastly, two, not one, but two huge title matches, both featuring the man they call the glitch in the system, Ted P. De Niro. He defends his knowledge championship against my man, the buddy, the guy they call the Feeny Phoenix. And of course, he challenges Cypher in our main event for the biggest prize we have, the Max Wrestling World Championship. Ooh, that was a mouthful. Now make sure you subscribe right here to, to youtube.com forward slash Max Wrestling. Hit all the Spotify's, the SoundClouds, wherever it is you get your podcast, and head on over to the Beauty Dumb website, Max Wrestling Net. Dot, uh, weebly.com. <laughs> Choking we on got the words over here. We did get there. Uh, and after a wild first night uh, early yesterday morning, let's uh, let's let's give a first off congratulations to um, Double. Well, at the moment we got two leaders in the Iron Bank. We'll address that later. Beer and Co- uh, Cipher, both on yeah. seven points. I don't know what the fuck we're gonna do with that one. Um, Seriously though. And after some shenanigans, I gotta say we have a new television champion. The TV title is back in the Dragon Club camp with the lawyer Chad Malcolm. You, this you, this guy. This is why you don't deal with lawyers. Point, mate, don't tell anybody. Fucking son of a bitch. Don't deal with lawyers. They will find the loophole every time. A double-sided coin. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen Night One yet, go check it out. Um, pause this. Go check out Night One. Come back to this. It would be very oh, yeah, confusing and, if you watched this and then went back to night one. And when, and when you're laughing because you can't breathe anymore, we understand. We understand. I was I was more upset, but trust me, after listening back to it, bank <laughs> holidays and such. <laughs> this is the thing. You uh, you put me and Chad in a room when we just talk shit. You're telling me. <laughs> you're telling me, <laughs> fam. This is why we did so many episodes of Open Road. A lot of those episodes were split in two from one car journey because we talked that much shit um, and we still have plenty of unused footage so I don't know if Open Road will ever make a comeback but there is material available from like two or three years ago but anyway uh, let's waste no more time and go straight to some promo action once again before we predict Wrestlemania Chris Reed the mercenary Mike Larkin the podcast machine they have cr- never crossed paths before but they're about to for the first time because 
It wouldn't be Promomania without some history being made. Welcome to the Mike Larkin Experience. Go ahead, breathe it in, take it in, bask in it, bow down to greatness even, because this is going to be like taking candy from a baby. Actually, give that baby his candy back because he's probably going to be fat and obese and make bad decisions for the rest of his life. So to all you pickup truck drivers and you tractor operating numbnutses, let's get this started, shall we? Before we even get into this, you know, this feels wrong. Is he even over the age of 18 to be my opponent in this promo exhibition? Like. I feel like I'm taking on a 16-year-old who cried and got mad because Hot Topic closed early. I feel like I'm taking on a kid who just came back from a Blink-182 concert. All the small things, promos on Max Wrestling. Hold on one second. I got a microphone, Dazzy. I got a microphone. If that is bringing the best out of you, I don't want to see you at your worst. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got championships. I got championships. You know, I used to get excited about that when I was 10. Oh, my God. You could collect championships, but you can't collect pussy. You call me the Ryback of Max Wrestling. When last month you were singing my praises. Phoenix versus Larkin, let's go. Woo! I've seen a lot of fickle, feeble-minded stands in my life. But you, sir, take the cake. You call me Ryback when you're the guy who goes, you're nest. <laughs> what? You call me Ryback, but you quote Oldberg? Oldberg, the guy who can't even get Asuka's name correctly, the guy who should have spoke up, who shouldn't have won a championship. Are you fucking kidding me? You were the village idiot of the Max Wrestling Podcast. You know that? You like to use the hashtag... The Mercenary versus the Podcast Machine. Well, the Podcast Machine is a craft that I have honed over eight years. If I'm not doing this, I'm not whole. This is my everything. I love this. And you just want to walk through my door, not even clean your feet nonetheless, and go to my table, take food off of my plate, take money out of my pocket? No, sir. You know, in your last bout, you've been choked out. You've been choke slammed. But me, I'm a different type of cat. I am a different breed. I'm like Lorena Bobbitt. I'll chop your dick off and make you feel less of a man than you already are. To quote a stopper of shows, to quote a kid who broke a lot of hearts, don't hunt. Well, you can't kill, Mr. Mercenary. I hate your stinking guts. You are the product of a generation that is disposable, that is lazy. You like to sit there in the Max Wrestling Facebook group, streaming it up, going to get something to eat, sitting there in your underwear like a couch potato, and you think that people actually give a fuck? Well, newsflash, nobody gives a fuck. Hell, this isn't even Mike Larkin versus Chris Reed. This is Mike Larkin against some enhancement talent, some jobber on Wrestling Challenge, on Superstars, Main Event, Metal, Jack, Saturday Morning Slam, Heat, Velocity. This is an atrocity. It was at this point when you knew you fucked up. You don't tug on Superman's cape and you don't fuck with Mike Larkin. Who the hell are you, Chris Reed? Who do you think you are? You're an afterthought. You're the reason why piss breaks exist. You are not ready. You want to talk about, you want me so bad at Promo Mania, well, fine. Yeah, I want you so bad at Promo Mania so I can put you in your place and humble you a bit and let you know where you stand on the chain of command. You're a silly hoe, and I'm a straight up pimp, and please believe I don't want no scrubs. You want to talk about your world tour? Well, this tour has ended. Later, groupie. My name is Mike Larkin. I am the podcast machine, and as always, it's my pleasure, and most importantly, it's your honor. You're welcome for the experience. Roll credits.
Not just today, not just this month, not just this year, but in all of Max Wrestling Promo Mania. I'm not going to lie, I didn't think I would find myself at this event. I didn't think I would. The reason why I did not think I would find myself here at this event is because when everybody thinks about Max Wrestling, 10 years from now, when everybody thinks about Max Wrestling, they are going to be, no, they are going to be thinking about Promo Mania. And when they look back at the history of Promo Mania, they are going to be thinking about the likes of the Captain, Travis Anderson, Corey, Moses Marquette, Ted P. De Niro, Beer, the Phoenix, and so on and so on. Promo Mania basically gives you the opportunity of who you are how you got there, why you're there, and why you deserve to be there. Not just, not just this year's Promo Mania, but next year's Promo Mania 10, Promo Mania 11, Promo Mania 12, Promo Mania 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Promo Mania solidifies of who you are. Even you, Mike Larkin. Or should I say, the Ryback of Max Wrestling. The reason why I keep on calling you the Ryback of Max Wrestling is because just like Ryback, you're just trying to find a way to keep yourself relevant. That's why I keep on calling you the Ryback of Max Wrestling. Because you're just taking, because you're just hogging everyone's spotlight so you can keep yourself relevant. But apparently that's too much for your little fragile ego. So you want me to put a little bit of respect in your name? Fine, I'll put a little bit of respect on your name. When you're gone from Max Wrestling, everybody is going to know you as the guy who, who held up to the Knowledge Championship for two years. Everybody's going to know you as the guy who went up against the captain in the first ever no winner, no loser promo exposition here at, the, at this event called Promo Mania. I hope, I hope that fixes your little fragile ego market. Because that's all the compliment you're going to get out of me. But, that again, I have to give you credits. You once again found a way to keep yourself relevant. Can you see? You knew. I, I knew that you was watching the podcast three weeks ago. The podcast where I made the announcement that I'm doing an, an all-out promo battle tour to celebrate my one-year anniversary of me being here at Max Wrestling. So you took, so you seen this, you see this as an opportunity to once again keep yourself relevant. I'll give you that. Well played, good sir. Well played. You once again found a way to keep yourself relevant by calling me out at the biggest event of all in all of Max Wrestling, Promo Mania. But that again, in a way, I should be thanking you that you have actually helped me to get a match here at Promo Mania. Because if you didn't call me out, then perhaps, then perhaps I would never even make it to this year's Promo Mania. Perhaps I wouldn't if you didn't call me out. Well, Larkin, you need to wise up on who you're dealing with. 
you're upset that I keep on calling you the Max Wrestling. Well then, let me ask you this question. If you're so, if you're so butthurt over the fact that I, that I keep on calling you the Ryback of Max Wrestling, and you did everything in, here at Max Wrestling, let me ask you this question, Larkin. If you said that you have done everything here at Max Wrestling, then how come you haven't done the things that I did? Do you not remember who I am? If not, then let me remind you who I am. I am the mercenary, Chris Reed. I'm the guy who made his Max Wrestling debut against Cypher, who's going to be defending the World Championship later on in the main event of Promo Mania Night 2 against his former MDO member, Ted P. De Niro, who will also be defending the Knowledge Championship later on. I'm the guy who defeated him in my Max Wrestling. I'm the guy who defeated Corey in my Max Wrestling debut at the King of the Mike tournament. I'm the guy who challenged the cap, who went up against the captain three times. Two of them were which for the World Television Championship. And the third time, and the third time was just simply for pure bragging rights. But you see, Daz knew what he was getting himself into. He knew I wasn't going to let up easily. He knew I wasn't. He knew that he can actually beat me. He knew that he could if he wanted to. He got, as a matter of fact, he was so confident in this that he decided to add a stipulation in our final encounter where if I beat him, I get a pass straight into the semifinals in this year's King of the Mike tournament. And look what happened. I can say that I finally conquered the captain. I can say that I have finally defeated him. With that victory, I have gotten myself a pass straight into the semifinals in this year's King of the Mike tournament. I've conquered the captain. I conquered Corey long before he even became world champion. And now here you are calling me out. First time ever, it's going to be the podcast machine versus the mercenary. You need to wise up on what you're getting yourself into, Larkin. See, Larkin, I don't know why you would do it, but Mike Larkin, remember, remember all who you're dealing with. Remember all the things that I've done so far here in Max Wrestling. And I want you to pay attention on what I'm going to do this year. This year, it will be the year. This is going to be my year. I will conquer this year. So, and speaking of conquering, Chad Malcolm, I know you're watching. I'll even waiting to hear you. I'm still waiting to hear your answer, Malcolm. And just in case you forgot on what I'm talking about, next year, I am calling you out. I want you to be my next opponent in, in a TV rules bout on Thursday, April 25th. I'm going to give you next week to give me, to give me an answer. And just like I said to Das, and just like I said to Das, either I win, either I win this or I lose. One way or another, I'm going on to my next opponent. And Chad and Mike Larkin, you said it's your privilege, but most importantly, it's my honor. You know what, Larkin? You are right. This is my honor. This is my honor of me giving you the privilege of me tearing you out a whole new asshole. Mike Larkin, consider the podcast machine being conquered by the mercenary.
All right, so we have um, each night confirmed lineup for WrestleMania. There's seven matches on night one, six matches on night two. Whether they had anything on SmackDown remains to be seen. Um, hopefully it stays just like this because it looks like they're going to give plenty of time to everybody on night two. Yeah. Um, but let's kick it off with night one. Uh, let's let's go with what should be a nice opener. Gunther, Sami Zayn for the IC title. <clears throat> I set my thoughts exactly. Wrong guy in the match, though. I hate saying it. <laughs> but we got to say it. Has to be said. Love but this time Love last year, we all wanted Sami Zayn to win everything. This is true. I, the GSK <clears throat> was just talking. This is the exact <clears throat> say, the exact words that you just spoke, <laughs> my man. But the, but, but the truth is, is, as we always say, they like to build somebody up, get you invested, wear them out, and then build somebody new for you to get all invested in. And they did that. They did yeah. that with Chad Gable. And um, everybody was loving Chad Gable. Loving yeah. Him. WWE just love to pull the trigger too late. Bingo. Per- perfectly put. They, they pull the trigger way too late. And now we're kind of doing a, we- a a rewind since, you know, Cody gets another shot at his story. So does Sami Zayn, I guess, yeah. in a way. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But kinda. does Sami Zayn win or no. are they going to hold on and give it to Jad- Chad Gable? I think you got to give it to Chad. I think you got to hold off and give it to Chad. Uh, I mean, it would be a great moment. Don't get me wrong, but I, I, I really feel that even the loyalists are going to be like, bah, bah. if Sammy were to win, they'd be like, that's great. But that, but why you? Why wouldn't it Chad? How come Chad couldn't win? Yeah. Yeah, it's like they suddenly remembered WrestleMania's coming up. Hey, you guys love Sammy, right? Yeah, but we loved him more last year. He like a whole lot last year. <clears throat> Like remember, like, he could have beat Roman. That's how over Sammy was last year. That actually people thought that they could have spun it in some weird ass way where he does beat Roman. But again, they pulled the trigger too late. I don't think they pulled the trigger at all for the poor bastard. <laughs> and now that's you know a six month, seven month later consolation prize in a WrestleMania match, not even a title. Because I don't. Again, I don't. He could win, but I just feel. I feel. Everybody's going to have a sour taste about it. Or, like, does he win and then Chad Gable turns heel on him? That was that's, a- so, that's so Vince of you. <laughs> because my only thing is, if Gunfrew retains um, and then Chad Gable turns heel on Sami Zayn, then we're going to have heel versus heel for the title. Exactly. Doesn't make sense. This would be my take. Gunther to retain... And obviously, the night after WrestleMania is usually wild. Let's just let's just think last year never happened, by the way. And I think Chad Gable will challenge Gunther, put the belt on Gable after WrestleMania. Yeah, I think that would be a safer option. Nobody turns heel, um, and you get your big night after Mania moment because there's always at least one, apart from two years ago because that sucked ass. Yeah, last year was horrendous. And last year, last year was the worst. Day's holiday I wasted for that fucking <laughs> I don't think I even watched last year because I, I knew it was going to be bad. Oh, it's horrendous. So, yeah, I think that'll be my theory. Uh, Gunther to win. Gable will have the match on uh, on Raw. Makes the most sense. Uh, yeah, that one makes the most sense to me too. Um, I was going to go Gunther to retain anyway because I just think... It's way too obvious to just suddenly push Sami Zayn into this moment and then give him a title. Plus, there's tension there already with Gable. Mm-hmm. I love that training video on Raw. That that was fucking great. But Raw on Monday was actually really good, to be fair. Mm, yes. Uh, so, is that full house for Gunfer? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, sure. then. Uh, whew. there's a lot of multi people matches on night one. Uh, let, let's get this one out of the way then. Um, the six pack lad, fuck me, 12 people in a ladder match. Um, for the tag team titles. <laughs> now, Michael Cole has said both titles are on the line. Once one set are pulled down, the match is going to continue for the other set, which sounds like they're finally splitting the belts. 
Um, they could really fuck us over, though, and have one team pull down both belts. But For sure. Judgment Day <laughs> defending ah. against DIY, Awesome Truth, New Day, uh, New Catch Republic, and maybe, maybe not A Town Down Under. Please, no. I don't Fairly. get what was the point of having A Town Down Under in the match. What was, what's the logic? He, I mean, if the rumors are true and they're replacing him with the Hardys, then maybe they put him in the match as a safe, huh? like, cushion no. in no. case they couldn't get the Hardys. But that's the only logical reason I could think of for them maybe being taken out of the match, no. is if they're replacing him with somebody big. Do people really think the Hardys are coming back? I don't yeah. think. That's what my, my insiders tell me. That one, especially not in Jeff. That's what one, I, Jeff's I already announced he's going to be in Philly that weekend. Uh, Matt's out of contract. It's a ladder match, so that's where everybody's jumping to conclusions, and it's WrestleMania. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure. I did. There's there's a small chance, sure, and it's the type of thing WWE would do. But I can't think of any other reason that why they would just randomly take Theory and Waller out of the match. There was only one team I would have liked, and obviously we know now their destination. I would have loved the Machine Guns, but obviously. We know that actually. I, yeah, I forgot about that. There's they well, they, they were heading to AEW, but that would have been a nice twist. That would be sick. Um, so if we're taking this as everybody in this match is staying in this match, I gotta say, awesome truth for definitely winning the raw ones. Yeah, oh, great. Uh, oh, we're getting double points for this match because it could be two winners. All right then. Um, definitely awesome truth for the raw titles. SmackDown. Uh, do you I, know what? I <clears throat> say let Finn and Priest retain the SmackDown ones. Then they go to SmackDown, and that leaves Mommy alone on Raw. I'm going. That. I'll go with Bait and Dunn. I think everyone's really high on Tyler Bate at the moment, and obviously I'm a huge Tyler Bate fan. Uh, I'll go Bait and Dunn to the SmackDown tag titles. Raw, awesome truth. And it'll start giving the, the tension into the Judgment Day. I like that more. That's my. You're take. right. They, they, they. Peter Dune has been has been on everybody's, <laughs> uh, I guess, good side, if you will. We finally got the the name back. He's being he's been loved. Tyler Bates showing off. He's a big strong lad. Um, <laughs> big strong boy. I lo- I love New Catch Republic. They're 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 great. They're a great team. They're, they they give you. They give you the NXT vibes without being an NXT. You yeah. know what I mean? They, they, yeah. they give you that. We were that team. We could have been a team kind of thing coming out of there. It's kind of why I wish Trent Seven was still around, but whatever. Mustache Mountain, still deep in my heart. Um, yes, I agree. I'm, 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 st- I'm stuck with the awesome truth. I feel like it's not like it's like a, a, a first, not a first, what am I trying to say here? Um, not foreseeable, but it just, it's the right fit. Plus, I don't see anybody else. Who else is on Raw that could win it? What, DIY? Yeah. DIY. Um, I just don't. I don't Raw see teams that. in there. New Truth Day is, SmackDown. Truth is so over, it's not even funny. <laughs> you, they got to strike while the iron's hot. But can we admit that the Creed's not being in it is a crime? Absolute crime. I fucking uh, hey, m- hey, Maybe they replace a A-Town down under. Thank you. Possible. If they, if, if they do that, I will fucking shit. Because all they got to do is attack them backstage and then yeah. take the spot. Oh, God, please. And then, hell, even Great Waller and Fury could interfere in a match and cost them the match for attacking them. That's Possibly. fine. A lot of options. That's what I'm a fan of. A lot of options. I much prefer the Creeds anyway. So, who are you going with for Raw? Uh, oh. let's go. I'll stick with the awesome truth. Yeah, and SmackDown. Let's take the gamble. Give me the new Catch Republic. All right. Um. Yeah. So I'm definitely going awesome truth for Raw. SmackDown. I'm gonna stick with Judgment Day to retain because I like. They they kind of need to split from Rhea Ripley. She's way too popular to still be in the group. Right. Oh, for sure. Plus, we've been talking about Balor and AJ last week, so. If he, hey, that's he, right. Balor needs to go to SmackDown. It's true. That's if Balor signs a new deal, because apparently his deal's running out very soon. Oh, he yeah. ain't going nowhere. 
Oh yeah, I'd love, I'd battle those steak. And obviously then, I sent a link to the to that goon on Twitter saying uh oh because Becky's not featured on Clash of the Castle, she's going to AEW. Becky's going <laughs> Be- Becky's not going to AEW. I love how people read way too much into the posters. Are they not on the poster? They're leaving now. Agreed. It's, it's just no. Okay. You can't put everybody on a poster, fam. No, it doesn't. But <laughs> if it involves a castle, you have to put Drew McIntyre on it. Yes. Oh no, <laughs> right? It's like in the, it's like in his contract. Yeah. Drew McIntyre, I, DC is going to appreciate this reference. Drew McIntyre is literally Bron from Game of Thrones. He just wants a fucking castle. <laughs> I'm loving McIntyre at the moment. It's the best work I've seen him do. I, I I like the fact that he is just trolling the shit out of Punk. Seriously, because obviously, though. obviously, obviously, they they you know they've talked about it, and Punk must be okay with it. Oh, yeah. To oh, be yeah. such a great sport for McIntyre to really rib him this much. <laughs> He's like, hey, you know, what would be great. Put a picture of me on your t-shirt of like me, you standing over my grave. That'd be great. That was good to be fair. That was. The meme that started it all, and then fucking last week, Punk said, "What, what did what did he say?" To, uh, swear. Oh yeah, he called him dipshits. dipshits. And then McIntyre's like, "PG brother," and then a couple of hours later, Rocks drops an f bomb. <laughs> that was whatever exactly. to the PG. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on to. They had they had to have a, a brothers match every few years at WrestleMania. Jay versus Jimmy, Uso versus Uso, Yeet versus No Yeet. Um, like logic says Jay because he's way more over than Jimmy. Hmm. But I can see him fucking us over and just going Jimmy. Main event Jay. Uh, main well, event yeah, Jay. I mean, he's never in a main event. Where's Solo at? You know what I mean? Yeah, Solo has no match. He's just there to interfere. Exactly. Exactly. So that's kind of why I'm already saying like that. Because I, I, I'm with you. I'm like, Jay's so over. It's not even funny. Main event, Jay, just, you know what I mean? Don't even have the match. But then you remind yourself that Solo's not doing fuck all and will likely cost somebody something in this. And God damn it. Because of that, I'm, I got to go, Jimmy. It, I think the writing's on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going Jimmy. Uh, as much as I think it makes more sense for Jay to win, uh, you know what? Jimmy kind of needs a win because he's been doing fuck all since he broke That's up. True, he's just too. been beating people up and getting his ass beat in matches. So, <laughs> yep. yep. Battles do wonders for Jimmy. We got to remember that the last two matches at WrestleMania we had with two real life brothers. Owen beat Brat. Yeah. Pat beat Jeff. I'm gonna go Jimmy. Yeah, the heel always wins. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, the less liked brother. I like it. Yeah. The only exception is Undertaker beat Kane twice. Yeah, but not real life brothers. I know. <laughs> wait, wait, well, what? Semantics, bruv. Semantics. I actually thought they were when I was a kid. <laughs> you know what? For a time, Same. I thought Edge and Christian were brothers. Same. Oh, yeah, they kind of look alike. Yeah, especially back then. Oh, fuck yeah. I mean, I mean, I remember Christian's debut. He like came up ringside during Edge's match, and Edge was just staring at him. And I think even the commentary team went, "He looks just like him." <laughs> uh, break down that, yeah. Yeah, that was it. Who who was Edge facing? Was it Owen? Owen. Yeah, Owen. Far. Owen Hart. Okay, right. where are we up to? Uh, let's get to the women's match. Hey. Oh, okay. Both women's title matches are on night two. Okay. Um, so Bianca. Jade and Naomi, Team Bad 2.0, whatever you want to call it, versus Damage Controls, Dakota, Oscar, and Kyrie Sane. Does it make sense for Jade to lose her first proper in ring match? Oh. No. Exactly. And Asuka's never won at WrestleMania, and which means a bit of a crime. Yeah. Uh, I'm Why gonna do you have to go... remind me of these things. <laughs> yeah, Asuka losing last year was a crime. Yeah, I know. Her losing to Charlotte was a fucking crime. So oh, it's been like two man. out of the three years. Crime. Yeah. Uh, fuck. Was that 36 with Kyrie. Can she lose and not be pinned? Yeah. I'm, I see. I, I like that reaction from Beard, just the, the sour face, because it's true. 
But that's the thing. Like I, but I can't sit here and and continue to accept the just pure uh, uh, disrespect that they give to Oscar and Wrestle Fucking Mania of all days, of all days, fam. Like that's where I'm like losing my shit. I don't think Damage Control needs the win. It's nowhere where I'm at. I'm more just focused on her. Um, but yeah, it's got to be Bianca, Jade, and Naomi. Maybe, and I'm and I'm pretty sure Jade will get the pin. Yeah. Bia. Yeah. yeah, I'll go Jade, uh, Bianca, and Naomi. But I said a few weeks ago, I think they'll pull the trigger on Bianca. Yeah, I think we said it last week too. That they're planting seeds for a heel turn. So I oh, yeah. think Jade steals the win from Bianca, and Bianca uses that as ammunition to turn heel. Make the match happen. Make that. Like it. uh, it's probably not going to be till SummerSlam. So. Um. And I just realized I didn't scroll up the list far enough. Rhea and Becky is on night one, but uh, let's get this one out of the way first because whatever. Tag team match, Ray and Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar and Dirty Dom. It just feels like shoot-in. So think... shoot-in, not even funny. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this match. Because Dragon Lee doing Dragon Lee shit. Uh, I'm hey. going with Dom and Santos so Dom can get that win back. No. I'm, I'm going with them based on Carlito turning heel. Yes. Good call. You guys make more sense than I do. I just was like, Dragon <laughs> Lee, why, why are you going to beat Dragon Lee? But then again, he's not as over to them as he is in my mind. Still watching this guy in New Japan for crying out loud. Um, yeah. yeah, you guys are right. Fucking yeah. Um, I mean, is there a chance of um, Carlito and Dragon Lee turning heel and both joining... Legato. Dragon Lee. Because, like, they've been... Santos, in particular, has been egging Ray on about... Uh, not Ray. Egging Dragon Lee about, you know, you're trying to be like Ray Mysterio. You're never going to be Ray Mysterio. Maybe he's got into his head a little bit. No. No, I can't say that. No, I, he, it's too early for Dragon Lee to be turning. It's just a little... It's just too early for that one. Uh, but, yeah. But, I, I, but Carlito, yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, Carlito. Oh yeah, <laughs> are you kidding me? He's here. He's he's prime for it. He's he's already showing signs of fucking turning. So it's gonna happen. Um, but what I will say is, because again, this was WrestleMania, so we're gonna have awesome entrances. If Santos and Dom do not wear their dad's masks coming out, everybody fails. You understand me? Everybody fails. Honestly, I loved Dom's entrance last year with awesome. the police escort. The shit was awesome. I thought if he has that entrance all the time. He'd be great. That's too costly. Yeah, it's too costly, but it was badass. It was. Badass. He spent he spent less than a night in jail, but he looks so cool. <laughs> this is true. We saw it, and I was like, "Yeah, this is badass." Yeah, I'll, I'll step my step my guns. All right, so full house there for Dom and Santos. Uh, all right, let's go to the women's world title match and. Uh, a few weeks ago, I would have sworn blind Becky was going to win because it's been a year now for Rhea Ripley. Um, technically, Becky's never won this title before. Um, apart from the NXT title and the tag team title, she hasn't won a women's title for a long time. But slowly, people are turning on her because she's not Liv or she's in the spotlight for whatever reason or she... Beat somebody in NXT, but people are turning on Becky now because turning on popular people is a popular thing to do. I think they're turning on her because we're getting what we used to get, which was that we finally build up other people and then, oh, hey, it's random main event, Trish Stratus. Where the fuck did you come from? Uh, and it's given me that kind of a vibe. I don't hate this. You know, I've, I, I've, been, I've, I've been seeing, foreseeing this match since... The start of the fucking year, I think, if not a little sooner. She's yeah. kind of been writing on the wall that this was going to be a main, this was going to be a, a WrestleMania match, and everybody's bitching about it, which doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, we, I mean, we knew she was going to win the Elimination Chamber before the fucking Elimination Chamber happened. Yeah, that so part I really didn't like. Uh, and it was the same <clears throat> with Shayna and Becky. I hate it when they build up two rivals before 
the challenger even qualifies for the title. Yeah. Um, I, I, I agree. I mean, some, again, I think we all were loving Liv. We were on the Liv train. We wanted to go for Liv, blah, 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 Liv. But uh, Becky fits. Now, does Becky win? No. No, no, she doesn't because it's fucking Rhea goddamn Ripley. She's still the hottest thing in wrestling today. Not women, yes. not just fucking, she is the hottest thing in wrestling. There's not a promotion you could go to. Can't may mention Rhea Ripley's name and not hear a fucking pop. So for that reason alone, I don't think she's going to lose yet. Again, SummerSlam mm. comes up awfully fast after this. It's a huge, it's another big event. Maybe she loses then, but it, she's, it, she could do the new Roman. She could be the, the, the female Hogan with the five, 800,000 day reign or whatever. And nobody <laughs> would give a shit. Nobody would blink an eye. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, Becky doesn't have to win, but this is a WrestleMania caliber match, so people can't be mad at that. Like they've never, I don't know, they have they never gone one on one before. Rhea and Becky did on NXT a few years ago. Oh, okay, okay but no yeah. contest. Before they were both huge. huge. Um, they haven't gone one on one since then. Um, they're, 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 yeah, I. I think Rhea retaining is the safer option. Again, Becky doesn't have to win. And yeah, you're right. A lot of people did love Liv. Uh, I love Liv Morgan. But I also love how people freak out when she loses a match. Like it's the yeah. worst thing to ever happen in the world. Like fucking calm down. Liv crybabies are called them on Twitter. They, they are so... Stans, fucking call them. Liv stans. They're the worst. Babies, honestly. You've got to understand that your favorite wrestler can't win every fucking match. Oh, yeah, I agree. It gets boring. Yeah. Even Roman lost last year. He, got, he, took, a, he took a fucking fall in a tag match because the Usos. Yeah, and that was huge. Oh, it really was. Um, so. Well, I mean, I think we're definitely going to get a new champion in the other women's match. So, yeah, I'll go with Rhea uh, to retain. I'll go with and I think Liv will cost Becky the match. And that's when you're going to get the Liv Morgan heel turn. But then, is it going to get Becky out. moreover? That's, I mean, I, I'll always love Becky, no matter what. She is one of the best. But I think it's the perfect time to pull the trigger with Liv. Yeah. If she does feud with Liv, Liv has to win. Because people are already, like we say, turning on Becky. They'll go nuclear if she beats Liv as well. And you've got to remember, 18 months ago, when Liv had the belt... Was she a good champion for me? That match at SummerSlam with um, Ronda Drowsy, I thought it was a bit shit. But uh, did yeah. they really need to put the belt back on Ronda at um, Extreme Rules? No. No. I, I'd have given um, I mean, we, I think we talked about Ronda last week. Her first run was great. Her second run, she phoned the entire run in. She didn't give a shit. Not a single one. Until, okay, uh, I the think. Walk, until the walking robot came back in December. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then that brings us to the tag team main event uh, for the second year in a row. High stakes. If Rhodes and Rollins win, all members of the bloodline will be banned from ringside on night two. If Rock and Reigns win, it'll be bloodline rules. Um Rock, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins. I don't want to see any heel turns. Um, I don't want to see anything like that. That'll fuck up the whole dynamic. Just keep it plain and simple, face versus heels. Because, honest to God, we need to finish this fucking story. Um, what the fuck is bloodline rules? I'm guessing anything goes. Yeah. Which I would love because... People are talking about this Avengers moment in night two where, you know, Cody and Seth, uh, Cody's beat down. It looks like he's going to get screwed again. And then out comes everybody that the bloodline's ever done dirty. Jay, Sammy, Seth. I mean, hey, it worked in the movies. It did. It worked in the movies. The portal scene is iconic. Um... And you know what? I yeah, give give Rock and Roman a win on night one because let's face it, Roman has to lose on night two. Yeah, and the more dramatic you make it, the better. Yeah, stack the odds against Cody. He's already gone through hard times. 
What's a few more? I I fucking like that. I do. I really do. Um, it's that first off, beautifully put by the way, with the whole you know Avengers thing. Um, and I think it could work. I really do think that that could work. And then again, you uh, as you said, the odds are even more stacked against Cody. It'll be an even bigger victory for him when he finishes the story. He overcame every single odd and got help from the boys. You know what I mean? Because you believe in your friends or some bullshit. There's going to be some positive fucking story. They'll spin on it for the children's. Um, And for me also, Cody doesn't have to take the pin. And McIntyre could cost Seth the match. Which also keeps him safe from turning heel then too. So I kind of want Drew to do that. I was gonna. That's an extra dynamic wrench thrown into the whole thing. I kind of like that though. I really do like that idea. Do I get bonus points if McIntyre attacks Rollins and costs him the match? I sound like Phoenix. I know, right? I sound like Feeny right now. I I want bonus points for this. I want bonus points because I woke up early and I'm here. You definitely get bonus points for that. That's right. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, I'm sticking with a bloodline. Yeah, dude, it just makes better sense. It makes for a better main event. It makes for it builds the anticipation. It's it's Rock's first like proper match since. Is it oh, Cena? Fuck. Shall, shall we count the match with Eric Rowan at Russell? No, Lane? no, that that no. was a six Stop second it. impromptu Cena. stupid thing. So Cena was his last proper match. He can't lose this match. Won't make no sense. Also, are we going to see an appearance in the likes of your Tama Tongos? Uh, also, um, what was that? Uh, I did Enjoy think about it last week. I hope not. Yeah, it doesn't fit. Because if he interferes, then that just tells me Roman's going to retain again. And we don't need that right now. Ain't nobody got time for that. No. Heard that. I don't need another year of Roman. I said this last year. Oh, great. It's been terrible. Um, this will be my take. Uh, Rock and Roman will win. And I personally agree with you that McIntyre will show up. And I think because there was a little Easter egg on Raw, if you have not noticed, a few weeks ago, the night that the Rock kicked the piss out of Cody, which was a fucking great scene, by the way, especially with the rain in Chicago. Rock's been amazing. And it, and it showed in the background Cena and Steve Austin. Are we going to see one? Yeah. Stunner. On the rock. I would love it. Put the other See, well. Avengers. Out comes Austin. Out comes Cena. Out comes Taker. Please. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, Stop. not take. We don't need take. We, we need. And if we do have an Avengers portal scene, we need the rock's greatest rival. The hurricane. Oh. <laughs> A big old hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's so great. He's fantastic. He's in Gorilla now. Is exactly. He? So yeah. you know how easy that would be? Do you ima- could, could you could you imagine first off all like the memes? <laughs> yes. Just, like all the memes that happen. Rock it's the hamburglar again. <laughs> I love hurricane. That or so what wonderful. would be even best is if like the one and only time you ever see panic in the rock's eyes is all of a sudden you hear there's a hurricane coming <laughs> yes. through. And he's just like, oh no. <laughs> I, I can see it now. This would be that'd be the greatest thing ever. The Vietnam theme plays. You see helicopters. He's getting flashbacks to 03. Dude, um, sign me up. Right, that is night one. Um, it 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 looks kind of predictable from our predictions. Like a lot of them match, so we'll see if they swerve us or if it's just night one's usually pretty good fan service. That's true. That is yeah. true. Night one was amazing, and then night two. All bets are off, but uh, I think, let's go on tonight too, I think we're probably going to kick it off, we're going to go title match to title match, so, opener, world heavyweight title, Seth, fucking Rollins, versus Drew McIntyre, yeah, we're on Netflix soon, they can change it to fucking Rollins. Yeah, they can, they really want to get crazy. <laughs> um, Drew, surely. A few weeks ago I would have said Drew, but I think Seth's going to retain now. I, I was just literally going to say Unless thing, like, Unless ahead. Drew does cost Seth and Cody the match And then somebody from the bloodline Returns the favor for Drew And that pisses Seth off even more What about Priest? Pre- yeah 
he could cash in. They dropped the ball. He could cash in and pin McIntyre. Due to Seth, what Seth did to Roman and Brock. That'd be great. That would be awesome. To have fucking Seth be the guy that be pushed aside. Or be the guy that gets pinned or gets Seth Rollins. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, because Seth was the first one to cash in during a match. And turn it into a triple threat. So, for somebody to do that to him would be great. That would be a fucking... Fantastic way to open night one. A fantastic way. Then you don't have to crown Drew. I mean, even though like all signs point to count uh, crown yeah. Drew, but then um, that also like leads you right down the road of him versus Punk when they're healthy. And I want the curveball that is Damian Priest. But that's awesome. Uh, if Priest does cash in, pin Drew, become world champion, Drew's obviously then going to feud with Priest. Then you can have Drew win the world title in fucking Scotland at oh. Clash of the Castle. Hey. Because he should, let's be honest, he should have won in Cardiff. But obviously he oh. won against Roman, so. Absolutely. Um, this may be extreme fancy booking for me, but I think that's probably the best scenario we can hope for. So. Yeah, it's worse extreme booking out there, so. Yeah, I'm going to go all in on a cash in and Priest wins. In the opening match. God, yeah. It's too awesome to pass up. There's actually someone I follow on Twitter. She's a diehard Drew McIntyre fan. I actually said if Priest cashes in on, on um in the match, I'm going to be frightened to just literally just say one thing. <laughs> and she says you'll deactivate Twitter. But yeah, I think I'll go Priest. So kick I mean, it's teasing the fact that Punk's going to probably have an effect on the match because he's on commentary. But let's face it, he's probably just going to commentate. Yeah, probably. His, his triceps nowhere near fully healed. Sure, he's rehabbing again, but not enough to compete. Probably. It's not a worse range that he had uh, um, last year. Uh, was it oh, all out? Yeah. Um, 2022, was it all out? Yeah. Um, was that his bicep or his tricep? Tricep. It was his right tricep. And it's his tricep this time. Which one was it in AEW? I think it was one in A. And I think was it after Brawl? Out? Was it during Brawl Out? Wasn't it? Or was it after Brawl Out? Yeah. After. Yeah, yeah. And Wait, I he had a press it, conference. Did he tear his tricep already? Prior in AEW, or was it like a bicep injury? I think it was his bicep in AEW. I'll take it. I want to say it sounds more of like a bicep. Because. He came back pretty quickly and then feuded with Mox. Yeah. So it couldn't have been his tricep. I hope so. Son of a... Take that up now. Obviously, he injured his knee in, in the match against Hangman. But at All yeah. Out, it... Oh, it was his tricep. Yeah. It was during oh, the match wow. with Mox. During the match with Mox. Because uh, then he came back at collision ten months, uh, a couple of months later. Punk, you need to bubble wrap your triceps, pal. See, that was, or fucking hit the goddamn gym, fam. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, and, yeah, and shit. Eat some fucking meat for crying uh, out loud. Yeah, he didn't come back pretty quick from that one. The knee injury came back pretty f- quick for the broken foot and everything, but yeah, he tore the tricep in September. Then he didn't come back until June for collision. I was there when he broke his foot jumping into the crowd in LA like an asshole. <laughs> Yeah, it was cool though when he jumped in the crowd, but then he just did it one too many times. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So, <clears throat> I'm going priest. Beer's going priest. Mo. I like it too much. I like it too much. Watch it be a plain ass victory though. Paul, if you're listening, do it. Pull the trigger. Add a little spice, Freak. baby. If you're listening, like Triple H is gonna fucking listen. <laughs> I'm about to say TK um, would make sense. Papa H, I don't know. Oh, TK always fucking listens because every time we predict something, it comes true. It's, yeah, it really does. It doesn't take much, too much. Triple H is like, no, these guys know too much. Yeah. I think Triple H likes to swear a bit more, more or less. Yeah. They must be working for Uncle Dave. All right, uh, let's go to a six-man tag team Philly street fight. Um, mm-hmm. The Pride versus the Final Testament. Ah. Just because, yeah. So Lashley and the Street Profits versus 
uh, carrying cross and the off was a pain. Got a bit bored of his feet, to be fair. Yeah, yeah they, they just the they cannot get cross right. I'd put him back in NXT. He had it's the total package in NXT. They didn't need to change anything. He was amazing in NXT. Then they brought him up to Raw and Vince gave him a gimp mask. Oh. That was literally it. Awful. That's literally it. If he didn't have that stupid fucking entrance gear, we would have had Karrion Cross, the guy we had. But no, Vince has to spice it up, pal. And what did it do? It fucking ruined it. And now you have him playing like a tough greaser for fuck's sake. I don't even really know what Karrion Cross is. And he's floundering. He's floundering. This guy was, he was the next big thing. I hate to put terminology on it, but whatever. Mm. Anyway, he was the next big thing leaving NXT and it got shat on. You can't, I don't think you can go back and hit a reset button. I think you just need to fucking put the fucking pedal to the metal with him and just go. Yeah. Like he, he was so over an impact that when he left, they, the diehard impact fans took it so hard. It's probably, it, it would be the equivalent of Seth Rollins leaving WWE. Damn. Damn. I just sent Cross back to NXT. I'd have loved Cross. Mm. I feel like someone like a Dragonov or like a Dijak or something like that. But it's just something missing with Karen Cross. It's, I just yeah. don't. Something's missing. They changed way too much. Um, they they let him grow his hair, which first of all is stupid because he looked menacing as a bald guy. They sure did. Um, I, I mean, I, you you can see what happened. That they decided to call him up to Raw, and then Vince watched Mad Max two for the first time and thought, "Hunter, I got a great idea for this cross guy." You gotta you gotta watch this. And now and now with the hair, he's I'm gonna say it like this: the hair, all it does is just, he's just distracting. Mm. He's too good looking to take seriously now. <laughs> yeah. When um, Mike interviewed him for Max years ago when he was still an impact. Um, and I sent in a couple of quotes and said that he reminds me of Victor's ass. And he thought, I've heard that before. <laughs> and that, yeah, I can see that. Like bald psycho. Killer. Works. Killer cross, as he's usually known as. Get back to those days. But uh, as far as this match goes, I, I don't really care. But <laughs> I'm going to go with a pride. <laughs> uh, I was the greatest. I don't really care. Um, sure. Why not? Let's go with the pride. I mean, I like the Final can, Testament. I, I, but then again, I, I, I'm a fan of Akum and Rizar. Um, can, can we borrow Chad's coin for this match? Yeah, seriously. Seriously. Uh, yeah, give me the pride. Fuck it. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I'll go uh, lashing the Prophets, but can we just admit that the Prophets, when they tried to turn them heel, was an epic fail. Yeah. Okay. As an Angelo Dawkins. You can't hate them. I love them. I, Montez Ford, I'm a fucking huge fan. I'm glad that they didn't turn one on the other, though, because Dawkins would have floundered without Ford. Oh, seriously. That's the, that's the problem. That's, that's also why you can't turn them heel. Just doesn't work. Montez, though, when that he finally gets a chance to break, you can do whatever the hell you need to with him. Mm. I mean, uh, yeah, they're already pushing him with the fucking reality series with Bianca, which looks shit. awful. I gotta say, sorry. It's, uh, it's don't compare it to Miz and Mrs. Let's just say that. Oh, Miz and Mrs. is awesome. I don't care what Phoenix says. Is that the it pun? It's, it's that so wasn't good. supposed to be a pun, no, but it is awesome. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I, I'm actually going to watch it on the, that. The best episode is when Miz uh, buys Marisa birthday cake. And she That's wants the fucking this... first episode, too. Yeah, she wants this giant expensive cake. And Miz is like, why would I spend that much on a cake when I can get this one? So he <laughs> goes to pick up the cake with his dad, puts it in the back seat, breaks. The cake goes fucking flying. And he ends up going back to buy the expensive one in the first place. <laughs> yep. So he ended up spending like double on fucking cake. <laughs> It's just, it, mm-hmm. but that's it. Trust it gets better too. Like he hangs. I wouldn't say he hangs out, but like uh, uh, Maurice's mom lives with him. Oh God, Arjo, and yeah. she is the fucking best. She doesn't have to say a word, just a look. Her and her fucking scooter, and the it's just check it out. 
just watch like two episodes yeah. if you don't find it the funniest shit ever. Oh, you get hooked right away. It's, I think it's... if Phoenix gives it a chance, Miz and Mrs. could win him over to Miz after all these years. I don't know why. That's he... what it is. He hasn't given him a chance. I think Mrs. is great. I appreciate him so much more after that series. Yeah, that, Smackdown. that feud with Daniel Bryan, or Bryan Danielson now. Oh, yeah. That was the ultimate feud. Oh, has anyone seen Bray's documentary, by the way? Not yet. One Absolutely. time to emotional damage. Oh, it was absolutely amazing. Worth a watch. Is it just on a Netflix? Uh, uh, Nef- uh, just on a network? We're not on Netflix yet. It's on Peacock, but my um, a friend of mine actually shared the link for me. But unfortunately, it's not deleted. So, uh, is, it not, is it not on our version of the network yet? Not yet. I, I oh, did for fuck's sake. Two, two, it's uh, two hours. And it is worth every two hours. Oh, well, I'm sure I can it's find it somewhere. Right, yeah. Sounds like we got to Discord it. Sounds like a stream on Discord. Right, God, I can't. I cannot wait for fucking Netflix. Uh, okay, let's move on to LA Knight versus AJ Styles. I'm surprised there's no stipulation for this one. They've already had a street fight, literally in the street. It's just a DNA match. I'm just kidding. It is. I mean, they were both there at completely different times. Like, I think they, like, ships passing the night. AJ left LA Knight well. Eli Drake came in. Um, I really don't know. Uh, LA Knight. LA Knight? Needs his drafts, man. AJ can lose. Yeah, AJ's he's at that point in his career just... where he's won everything, he's done everything. He can just put people over now. Yeah. Sure, I mean it's and it's not a hindrance on AJ. At least in my mind, he's he's gotten to that point, as you've said. He's got he he's done enough. He's accomplished enough. Where uh, if AJ is just there to put on a banger, he's just there to put on a banger, and that's okay. Yeah, like what Bailey did last year. There you <laughs> go. All right. So far, night two is looking very predictable. <laughs> a little bit, which means they're probably going to swerve us on all three matches. So. Um, let's go for the triple threat for the U.S. title: Logan Paul versus Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. You know what? I think Logan Paul's going to survive. I was just going to say, when you fuck with your title on, you get a lot of stamina. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> if there's anybody in better shape than all these cats out there, it's got to be Logan Paul. Um, but I could totally see them throw the biggest curveball ever and be like, "Oh, cool, let's just crown Randy just because." And I think that would be such a goddamn waste. Um, I mean, I, he's a, he's had one reign as U.S. champion, and I have no memory of it. Same, same. I, but he doesn't need another one. Don't don't make us think of him as. as See, one. Be, Beer can't remember it. Randy Orton's a former U.S. Was, champion. I think it was in that he lost his gender. Yeah, uh, I think it was a fail four way. I think it was mainly oh. three. Yeah, but so I, I like, don't remember him as U.S. champion. But I know he's it was won like it. Older Randy. Yeah. Oh, fuck out of here, then. I don't give a shit about that. Oh, yeah, that. Young, young Boy Randy was all IC title. So then it... Young Randy no fucking matter. Easy. Logan Paul. There's no reason for Kevin to win it. There's nothing that's going to stick out about Kevin. Just keep Logan Paul having it. Like, Logan Paul is working fine. Yeah, R- Randy and KO have made a pretty good team lately. Um, and it's it looks like they're stacking the deck against Logan Paul, but... There's going to be a moment where Orton and Owens both kind of like, well, I want to win, but you want to win. Let's just fight it out. You know, they're going to cancel each other out. Paul's going to probably use the brass knucks again. Um, And I know this is the U.S. title, but I also love recently that Kevin Owens has apparently said he never wants to win the Intercontinental title again because he's got the exact same combined days as Owen Hart. Oh, hell yeah. That's super smart. Love that. Uh, So, yeah, Logan Paul. Yeah. Oh, so it's only yeah, like his what, second defense. Has it only really been two defenses of this thing? I think so. Yeah. Was it Rumble was one as he defended it again? This bad. No, I don't think every motherfucking rule. Well, yeah, because obviously himself. they had the tournament for the for Kevin Owens to win the number one contendership. So that took a oh, few yeah. weeks. 
Yeah. Uh, then he was in the Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I think this is only his second defense. Second defense, yeah. That's mad. He's pulling a Brock Lesnar, this bastard. <laughs> but he's still on TV every week. It, okay. Because you got to plug the... Brock. You got to plug the prime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, I, which, for once, I don't have this week. I got the the harder stuff. There you go. Even even though it's zero sugar. There's plenty of caffeine in it. Plenty. Um, let's move on to... The other women's title match. Hey. Even though I've already predicted this one. Eo Sky defending against Bailey. I mean, it was a good run by Eo, yeah. Honestly... And this is no disrespect to EO. I'm surprised they kept it on her this long. Yeah. I'm loving it. I love you. Yeah, I think it has been too long. No, I, I'm going Bailey. I don't want to say it's been too long. Yeah, I no. feel like it's, it's the right time. Yeah, it ha- she hasn't overstayed her welcome. If anything, she's uh, surprisingly had a long stay. Yeah. Uh, and a very welcome one. But if Bailey deserves another run. And it makes oh, sense sure. story wise for her to break out and win the title. Yeah, I'll go Bailey. Gotta go Bailey. Yeah, we're kind of looking predictable. Uh, I'm kind of glad so, that Dakota Kai turned so quickly because if she was still in Bailey's corner right now, I'd be predicting the heel turn and cost her the title. Oh, for sure. No, in Paul, there's going to be a fucking swerve. You know what? He overtains probably. But. And obviously we heard about yesterday, Julia has flown to the States. So are we going to see a stare down at WrestleMania? Ju- Julia Hart? No, no, Julia from New Japan. Julia oh, that's Julia. Julia. Hart. Yeah, I was going to say, she's still CBS champion. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Is that her name? I thought you just said it as Julia. No, it's Julia. No, it's oh, okay. pronounced Julia. It's Julia with a G. Yeah. There's <laughs> a bunch of extra letters. <laughs> Sounds like she's from Australia. Just add a bunch of vowels in there. She was born in London, by the way. Oh. And she can't, she doesn't really speak English. Well, I mean, Kane was born in Spain. Huh. <laughs> okay, full house for Bailey. Uh, yeah, night two is looking pretty predictable for us. What we got left? Is Fuck all segment. except the main event. Okay. It's meant to be a mystery segment as well, but that's going to be interesting. That'll be. I think that's just going to be like a throwback segment like they did with Rock, Austin, and Hogan 10 years ago. Oh, my God. 10 cool. years ago. Shit. Oh, no, Stop. I you so. made me feel older than fuck this right there. <laughs> right? We had a reunion segment with Hogan, Austin, and Rock 10 years ago. What? I missed that WrestleMania. I came back from Banadom on the same day. I literally slept for 14 hours. Oh, WrestleMania 30 was <laughs> awesome. It was awesome. You didn't know if Lester really beat Taker. Brian actually won it all. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, Okay, so main events. I don't want to predict it. It has to be Cody. He said this last year. (laughs) We did, yeah. But this time, even more so, it has to be Cody. I hope they're just doing, like, a Rocky thing. Um... Because Rocky didn't win the title until the second match against yeah. Apollo Creed. Uh, and they're in Philly. Hey. So all, all all the cards are on the table. They all look like they, they're in the right formation. All the pieces have fallen into place. If they fuck us over again this year, I don't know what to say. Randy, I did it. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> um. no it'll be the Pharaoh I did it. Oh, that'd be way better. That'd be way better. (laughs) Yeah, Rox also mentioned Pharaoh. He can come through the portals as well and just bite his ass. Right right in the foot. Right in the foot. Suck him, Pharaoh. Certainly Rock Hill's best thing they ever did. Oh, Hollywood Rock's been awesome. Oh, Oh, yeah. I mean, he he has brought, thanks to his, um, I guess just being him, just being fucking Uncle Dewey, He's brought a lot of old and newer eyes to the product. WWE is re back on the map in a lot of ways, if you will. And it, it, it's put, it's re put a spotlight back on Cody. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it was on, and you were like, okay, we got to finish the story. And us diehards, are like, all right, hurry up, finish the story. 
But now all them new cats are like, oh, my God, this day, uh, they screwed him last year. Oh, God, okay. They're even more invested than we are. And especially if how night one plays out, how we're predicting it to be, where it turns into bloodline rules and the deck, mm-hmm. the, the deck is ultra stacked against Cody, then he has to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. We so- had the Brian Danielson moment. He overcame, uh, you know, Randy Orton and Batista after beating Triple H. Yeah. Why not have, you know, Cody win it all, you know, even if it is the Avengers style with everybody helping him out. Um, very similar to Brett too, WrestleMania 10, because he lost to Yokozuna the year before, finally won it at Mania 10. Um, so Yoko. yeah, there's a, there's. Rude over WrestleMania 9. Why the fuck oh, did Brett. I win the belt? They screwed Yoko big time. WrestleMania 9 was a shit show. This, this, we, we've established this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they know they they know themselves. It was a shit show. Apart from twenty seven, that is the worst WrestleMania ever, in my opinion. Oh yeah, twenty seven sucks too. Sean and Tatanka to saved the show. I must be badass. Um, so I think we're all in the same boat that Cody has to win. So maybe we should predict how he wins. So for me, this is why it has to be bloodline rules because I've been saying for weeks that Rock has to turn on Roman. And I've seen people saying that that doesn't make sense because of how much he's been feuding with Cody. It's not about Cody. Rock doesn't have to help Cody win for Cody. It's just to remind Roman of his place. I like that. I like that a lot, but I I feel it's a little bit more of um, who's going to finally topple the bloodline. And now that it's, as, as they say in the anime world, at its full final form, who better to destroy it than Cody? You know, if Seth and Cody can't do it together, then Seth has to figure out, you know, how he's going to get it done. And again, if it turns out to be the help from the masses, the whole locker room, if you will, then that is, you know, the locker room toppling, you know, the bloodline. And together they helped Cody win it all. And it's. You know, it's good conquering evil. It's, it's it's literally the Avengers as we're as we've been quoting it for the last forty minutes. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't just Iron Man who took down Thanos. It was the whole fucking Avengers, all of Wakanda, everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love it. I'll so, to my guns. Yes. Bloodline's obviously going to beat the piss out of Cody, and then we're going to see Cena. He'll get beat down. Then Steve Austin will be there. I kind of don't want a stunner on The Rock, though, if it means The Rock's <laughs> going to turn on Rock. I, I mean, I do for nostalgia purposes. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I still believe Rock's going to turn on Roman. Like, everybody's going to be down. It looks like Roman's going to screw him again. Turns around, Rock bottom. Or this could be another swerve here. Because I feel Roman's been the third wheel in this match. Yeah, and exactly. It's literally been a third wheel. I'd go Cody to win. I've obviously seen her in Austin. Rock versus Cody at SummerSlam. Roman to turn on the Rock, and then you'll plant the seed ready for 41. Rock and Roman. Hmm. That's my take. That makes life a whole lot easier. Yeah, because I was just thinking like Rock Roman at SummerSlam. But if you Rock can Rock. stretch it out to Mania next year, then great. They did it with Jay and Jimmy. Yeah. Plus, we always know The Rock can go away. He can play the, you know, I'm an executive card. Yeah, also, isn't he working on something again soon? That's apparently. Isn't he working right now? Because the UFL's happening. I I keep forgetting he's still got that fucking league. Yeah, Yeah. again, it just started this past weekend. Week when, and I want to say they got... 12 weeks, 14 weeks, so. Oh, ju- just in time for Mania then, really. Mm-hmm. There you go. Works That's out fine. beautifully. That's but um, I was going to say, actually, I do like how he's come back, and he's been there every week. He's been on both shows. He's done a random press conference. Now, like, Rock's gone on all in for this Mania build, and how you doing? I hate it when that light comes on randomly. I was going to say... <laughs> It's always a glorious moment in the match when that when the lights. Yeah, hey, that's a bright idea. Right. So, however it happens, I don't care. Just give me Cody. Yeah, Cody. The coaster. Plus, let's not forget, Vince got his dirty, greasy paws on Mania last year, and this year it's all Paul. 
not yeah, this. so that makes me a little bit more excited to see stuff. You know, I, I, I'm expecting more swerves, but I'm also expecting it to be um, within the line of what the fans want because this is mm. WrestleMania. You know what I mean? Yeah, not just any WrestleMania. His first. Biggest. His first and WrestleMania 40. 40. God damn. And there was a thing with Nick Khan this morning saying that Vince is literally no longer associated. He resigned, and that's it. That's when Nick yeah, Khan. N- now we just need to lock him up. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's pretty much it. All of WrestleMania predicted. Um, it's taken us. Let me take a look. Uh, did 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 did. It's taken us about forty odd minutes. Not too bad. Yeah. That's for two good. for two for two shows. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Um, on night one, our current group MVP announced that his streak is finally over. After two years and seven months, Travis Anderson is no longer the group MVP. Um, I forgot how many days it was. It was 900-something. But, um, but he didn't say who knocked him off the top spot. He said he was going to make everybody wait till tonight. So, without any further ado, let's reveal the group champions in fifth place. Is beer. Hey. In fourth place, Teddy P. Uh, that's all them live videos. <laughs> yeah, I believe it too. Uh, in third place, just shy of the EVP, is Cypher. Hey, world champ runs another title. I like it. So, as you may have predicted, he's no longer group e- uh, MVP. He is in second place, the new group EVP, with 74 posts, 29 comments in the last 28 days, Travis Anderson. Loses one title, gains another, which means in first place, the new group MVP. First person to knock Travis off in over two years with 116 posts and 30 comments in the last 28 days is the mercenary Chris Reed. Ooh, there it is. Clap it up for him. Uh, and you know what? During our promos against each other, I've been ribbing you for uh, being a predictions champion and how we don't really take that title seriously. You got to get credit for this one because nobody's beaten Travis for that fucking title in almost three years. So I was going to say, yeah, predictions we don't take seriously, but the MVP we do. And speaking of that, you need to hit me up ASAP to give me your shirt size because you, sir, will be the first recipient of the first ever uh, official Max Wrestling t-shirt. Yeah, I mean, I've had plenty, but ones that we actually give to somebody else. <laughs> hey, lucky, lucky man. Uh, congratulations, Chris. Um, I did finally toast you on night one with actual alcohol, so um, this will have to do you hey, for now. I don't. Man, he beat me, and he won the MVP in two weeks. He is the MVP. Come on now. Yeah, he is the new group MVP, and let that be a lesson to you. All you got to do is post and post and post in the Facebook group for Max Wrestling, and you can be up there too. Ain't that hard, people. Mr. Beer. You thought I was Travis Anderson. You were mistaken. You thought I was alone. You were mistaken. As I said on night one, we are Legion. So, I offer you a second chance. A direct chance. One more opportunity to discover the man behind the mask. I challenge you to a promo exhibition at Full House. And may the odds be ever in your favor. Hey everybody, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atu. This is the voice of Killer Cross. This is Velvet Sky. 
Hey, this is Tommy Dream. Hey, this is AJ Kirsch, one half of the MLW commentary team. Hey, this is the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. Hi, this is Rain Cruz. And you're listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. You're listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. You are currently listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. And you're listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. Giving you all your wrestling information to the extreme. It's time to take it to the max. Take it to the max. It's time to take it to the max. We're about to take it to the max. We're going to take it to the max. And we're about to take it to the max. To the max. Welcome to the madhouse. Welcome to the madhouse. Welcome back to the Captain Mo Show. This is your captain. He is El Jefe and he is Bia. Make sure you are liking and subscribed on YouTube. Follow us everywhere. And for all the information you need, go to maxrussinnet.weebly.com. Um, during the break there, we, we heard from that mass motherfucker one more time. And on Mascaris. Um, obviously, he wasn't Travis, as we found out on night one. But he did, as we just heard, lay down a challenge for Full House. Mm, mm, mm. Right, first and foremost, I'm a man of my word, so if you just give me quick seconds. I was expecting the camera to turn and those other two be in there then too. Hey. So, Travis, I'm on my knees, I hold my hands hey. up. Man of my word, I sincerely apologize for accusing you of being a non, and I hope you can forgive me. There you go. I'm a man of my word. And as far for you, Anon and Mascaris, I accept to bring your little bitch ass on. Oh, my lord yeah. Jesus. You just better hope he doesn't bring those other two that we saw on night one. Who the fuck was them? They, they're Who breeding. Who the fuck was them? The anonymous fuckers are breeding. I, um, I, almost as bad as the kidnappings in NXT. I think we need our own Avengers to take on Legion right now. Yeah, bring them Oh my god, All right, well that's, that's y'all problem and not mine, lucky for me. But anyway, still to come tonight, we have the World Championship on the line. And, of course, the Captain's Open Challenge, which is still yet to be, you know, happening. But I guess we're going to save it for later. Give everybody as much time as they need to get here. But first, it's been a very busy night for man Ted P. De Niro, But he's got one of his two title matches happening right now. So he will go one-on-one. Last year, they faced each other at Promo Mania in just promo exhibition. Now, it's my favorite. Three stages of knowledge for the Knowledge Championship. Ted P. De Niro, the glitch in the system, versus the man that everybody fears in the promo game. It's the Phoenix. Round one, missing champion. Who is missing from this sequence of intercontinental champions? Mark Merrow, Rocky Maivia, Owen Hart. Who is missing? I think it was Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Um, it was like his reward for being punished after the Madison Square Garden incident. Yes, it was Hunter Hearst Helmsley. He defeated Mark Merrow before losing it to Rocky Maivia. Round two, bell to bell, and it's two of the Rock's matches. First one is Rock versus Austin, WrestleMania 17, and Rock versus Cena, WrestleMania 28. Which one lasted the longest? Okay, bell to bell. Um... I want to say WrestleMania 17, but I'm not sure which um, Rock and Cena match you mean. So, but, so I'm, I'm going to say Rock and Cena. There is less than a two minutes difference. Rock and Austin at Mania 17 was 28 minutes, 8 seconds. Rock and Cena won at Mania 28 was 30 minutes, 35 seconds. Round 3, 5 general questions. Question 1. Rikishi is a former member of which tag team between 1992 and 1994? Oh shit, I know this. Um, uh, head something. Not the head Um, head, head shrinkers, something like that. That exactly correct. Question two. Who did Solo Sokoa defeat for the NXT North American title? Oh, damn it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know the North American title very well, so I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to pass. It's Carmelo Hayes. 
question three how many times has rick flair held the official nwa world heavyweight championship uh i think 10 is a bit of a stretch so i'll take a stab at nine good stabbing nine is correct question four who did ken shamrock defeat in the 1998 tournament to win his only intercontinental championship i don't know uh i briefly remember him feuding with the rock probably going to be wrong but i will say the rock he did feud with the rock but as the defending champion he won it from x-pac in the tournament final final question who is the longest reigning united states champion of the wcw era i'm trying to think united wcw united states champions um geez um i don't i don't know lex luger Total shot in the dark, and no idea why he popped into my head. It was the ravishing one, Rick Rude. So, final total score of four. Alright, Teddy P, let's get into it. With round one, missing sequence. Who is missing from this sequence of intercontinental champions? Mark Marrow, Rocky Maivia, Owen Hart. I don't, I don't know. I really want to say Ken Shamrock, honestly, but that's just a shot and a half. Yeah, you're wrong on that one, sir. Um, it was actually Triple H, and the sequence in the proper way is Mark Marrow, Triple H, Rocky Maivia, and then Owen Hart. All right, now on to round two, which is my personal favorite round, Bell to Bell. You got to let me know which match went longest. Was it Rock versus Austin at WrestleMania 17? Or was it Rock versus Cena at WrestleMania 28? Rock vs. Austin. That was a long match. In my opinion. I mean, because I vaguely remember the Cena match being like super duper long. But I I feel like Rock and Austin was way longer than that. Rock and Austin was very long. They went 28 minutes and 8 seconds. But Rock and Cena was super duper long and went 30 minutes 35 seconds all right so now on to round three which is five questions of general knowledge question one is rikishi is a former member of which tag team between 1992 and 1994 edge shrinkers Correct. It was the Head Shrinkers. Who did Solo Sequoia defeat for the NXT North American Championship? Carmelo Hayes. Correct. How many times has Ric Flair held the official NWA World Heavyweight Championship? He's the 16-time or 17-time champion... I believe he's 16-time champion. Cena's tied with him. But NWA, um, eight? Ooh, so close. It was nine. Next question. Who did Ken Shamrock defeat in a 1998 tournament to win his only Intercontinental Championship? I'm between The Rock and Sean Waltman. X-Pac, Sean Waltman. Fate was with you on that one, sir. You are correct. It was X-Pac. Last question. Who is the longest reigning United States champion of the WCW era? I don't know. Something's in my head is screaming Terry Bouchelier. 
Hulk Hogan. That's a screaming Hulk Hogan. And I don't know why I'm thinking of Disco Inferno or something like that, but I don't know, man. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. That's my answer. Win, lose, or draw, whatever. All right. Unfortunately, you were incorrect. The answer was Rick Rude. That gives you a total of three points. And unfortunately, the Phoenix scored four. So therefore, we have a new knowledge champion, Craig Phoenix. And gold has came back to the Dragon Club. But don't forget, Teddy, that the night is not over for you yet. You can still walk out of Promo Mania champion when you go later on tonight and face Cypher for the World Championship. Say la vie. It was time for me to let the bird free. I have bigger things to accomplish. I need to get in contact with somebody before my match. It's understood. doesn't need to be, you know, the rest. Congratulations to the Phoenix, breaking his own record and is now a six-time knowledge Ooh. champion. And again, though, it was close, winning 4-3. Ooh, squeaky bad. Um, oh, so that's also two titles back in Dragon Club. Thank you very much, boys. Nah, now I got to win one. Maybe I'll have to settle for the predictions title. And I know, Chris, I know I said we don't really count it, but it's the only one I'm going for this week. <laughs> Give me, yes, give, give me predictions title 21. I count it right now. <laughs> yeah, now it means something. I mean, I can't win the MVP because I'm not eligible. Neither is Moses. That's true. Um, so, uh, allow me to announce that the Phoenix's first title defense will be at full house against someone he has never faced in trivia before. The man, the myth, the mercenary, and the new group MVP, Chris Reed. Ooh. And you know what? Since it's full house... We're going to go full trivia mayhem. Five rounds of trivia for the Knowledge Championship. The big guns are out. All right, then. So let's break off for a recap. Uh, you had Total Impact, Rampage Report, and Collision Course on night one. There's no Raw or SmackDown recaps this week because we predicted WrestleMania, but it wouldn't be Thursday without a round of beer. Hey. This is Beer. This is your NXT review for the 2nd of April 2024. The Go Home Show before Stan and Deliver. NXT kicks off with the finals of Who'll Face Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin with Nathan Frazier and Axiom picking up the win over Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson and the LWO. Banger match. Tag Team Wrestling is fucking back. Impressive show in all three teams. Shame we can't have all of them, but Axiom and Fraser against Breaker and Corbin. We're in for a treat. JC Jane defeats Fallon Henley. Quite a decent match, but the only down the pies is that the beautiful Jasmine Nix has suffered an arm injury, which hurts me because I would have loved seeing Jasmine Nix involved in the match this Saturday night. But unfortunately, the match has been confirmed by Ava after JC shoots after the big win over Fallon Henley. It's going to be Thea Hale, Kalani Jordan, and Fallon Henley to take on JC Jane, Keanu James, and Izzy Dane. Lexus King defeats Von Wagner with the coronation that the King is back in the dubs. But why is he not on the show, Sean? Watching you. Lola Vice defeats Carmen Petrovich with a sharpshooter. Even with Natalia present, we also had a segment earlier with Roxanne Perez disrespecting Natty. Don't disrespect your elders, young lady. But we will go to Roxanne right now because we had the supernova sessions between Lara Valkyria and Roxanne Perez. What a fucking segment! Roxanne Perez right now is the best thing in NXT. Her heel turn has been majestic. It's just an absolute genius move. Sadly, it was supposed to be Cora Jade. I love Cora. I wish her all the best. I wish her she gets back soon. Does this mean, with Roxanne being like this, does this mean we're going to see a reuniting of Cora Jade? And Roxanne Perez down the line. Even though there is rumours that Roxanne Perez is meant to be going to the main roster. Then again, I said this 12 fucking months ago. But didn't come to 
um, fruition. Over Femi defeats Joe Gacy via referee stoppage after unfortunately Gacy did suffer an injury. Was also jumped by Sean Spears before the match even started. So Sean Spears and Joe Gacy is confirmed. It will be on the kickoff show for Stand and Deliver. Surprise is not on the main main roster on the main mat on the <clears throat> on the main match card, but it's what it is. Ariana Grace defeats Rand Sinclair. We've still not seen Gigi Dolan since that heartbreaking defeat and the makeover from Ariana. Do we see it on Saturday? Now we also seen. NXT Anonymous show a clip of Ava on the phone to somebody saying that they are welcome to come Saturday as they are a part of the NXT family. Now, is it William Regal? Is it CM Punk? Are we getting a big debut? Are we getting a shock return? Are we going to see... Uh, out of nothing. Are we going to see Mandy Rose? I can't see it happening, unfortunately. I think it's Regal. Um, it makes sense for William Regal to be outstanding to deliver. I mean, he's the godfather of NXT. Come on. And then we've had a few seconds of the evening with Ilya Dragunov having his final meeting with Tony D'Angelo. This is a side of Tony D I've never seen before. But this match now between Tony D and Ilya Dragunov for the NXT Championship, this is going to be a banger. We have the main event of the night. So Sol Ruka finally getting some payback on Blair Davenport after Blair put her on the shelf for nine months. Sol Ruka looks back to her best, and I'm hoping that we can see Sol back going for that championship down the line. But who will be our champion? To final to close the show, we have Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes. What a segment. This match is going to literally feed families. This match is going to be fucking insane. Anyway, um, go home show, um, probably give it a 4 out of 5, but then again, I need to stop doing these reviews, I keep forgetting. Um, anyway, what time is it? What's the time? You know the time. It's time to go to Last Night of Dynamite, my tag team partner, El Jefe. Take it away, my man. Last night. Right, last night on Dynamite, it was a, it was a show. It was Dynamite, but again, WrestleMania is happening. There's indies going to be popping off a crazy all through the weekend. So lackluster Dynamite ain't going to kill nobody. But in a clear knee-jerk response to CM Punk's interview, Adam Copeland opens the show with an overly pro-AEW promo, a little bit to AEW, if I say so myself. He then finally introduces Will Ospreay for his match. Ospreys. We get a match that I actually didn't think uh, was going to be as good as it was, but it was as good as I as it could have been, and that's Osprey versus uh, Will Hobbs, the Battle of Wills, if you will. <laughs> uh, Osprey wins with a Phoenix Flash, followed up by a Hidden Blade, and after the match, he passes Brian Danielson on the ramp, giving each other a nice little stare down as they will go one on one in about three weeks' time at AEW Destiny. Uh, Danielson defeats Lance Archer. This poor guy can't get a win to fucking save his life. Uh, hits him with the what was it? The trifecta of knee kicks and then the Bissaka knee. It was a it was a good match. It wasn't the best match, but again, Archer is getting no fucking love in AEW. Nah. Goddamn you! He's a he's a giant jobber. He is a gi that's perfectly put. Thank you. He's a giant jobber. Uh, Renee brings Chris Jericho out the Lionheart Chris Jericho onto the stage. She calls out Hook, and Jericho admits that he turned on uh, all of his allies, but asks Hooks to believe in him. He says he does. And uh, they got a match on Collision. We find out that their opponents are Sean or Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic, you know. Obviously, as Hook likes to say, "I know where you, I know who you are." So we know, we know that Chris, you know, turns on everybody, and we do mean everybody. He a Judas. It fits perfectly. As Billy Gunn attacks Jay White during his entrance and beats him down, they finally get in the ring to start their match. While there is no offense in taking <laughs> two, <f> <laughs> wow. Billy beat the shit out of him. He did. I feel for Jay White. <laughs> so uh, feel no for offense in gets uh just it gets absolutely demolished before Gunn grabs a steel chair. That's when everything gets a little bit confusing in a way. The the, the, the gun boys, the young guns, if you will. Run mm -hmm. down and protect Jay White. Daddy, please don't beat him, Daddy. Which was every joke in the TSK's uh, chat last night. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, it ends via DQ, thanks to a lovely low blow before things get completely chaotic. 
and we get the uh, the the split that I think we were kind of waiting for or were expecting, I should say. And so now the acclaim, you know, against the Bang Bang, the club, it's uh, it's not fun anymore. It's not fun anymore. It's been dragging this on for too long. It's finally coming to a head. So Dynasty, maybe we get like a unification of the six or the was it the six man belts? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. We'll see. So on the stage with their backs to the crowd, Renee interviews Willow and reflects on her history in in Westchester or was was Westchester whatever the fuck wherever the fuck they're at. <laughs> Uh, Massachusetts. Up- there it is. Mass. There you go. She's Massachusetts. <laughs> and her uh, match for the with the TBS title, Julia Hart. Um, and then Mercedes Monet interrupts everybody's chant CEO and announces whoever wins at Dynasty, she gets at the next double or nothing, which means I'm more than sure Willow is going to end up winning. Uh, mm. I love Julia. She's a great champion, but she's also been stale as shit. Yeah. It's I no got to say, though, I really don't like these back to the crowd interviews. It it makes it feel like they're like they're trying to ignore the crowd. Yeah, and it makes even less sense because they're acknowledging the crowd for the whole promo, and like they've got their backs to them on the stage. Like I, I, I get it. They um, it's like WCW. They used to have the commentators with the backs of the crowd when they shot to them, but you're literally going out onto the stage and then turning your backs on literally everybody. Yeah, yeah. It just feels yeah. awkward. It was rev- it was kind of new and revolutionary in a way in WCW. Uh, I don't know what the fuck it is now. So let's not let's not keep going with that. Let's change it up. Uh, speaking of things that changed up and I love forever, which is the new young bucks, the young gentlemen, if you will. I can't pronounce. I got to think of a better name for them. Matthew and Nicholas uh, defeat the best friends in a tag team tournament after the match. And by the way, they won via the low blow. The low blow is like their new super kick, and I love it. After the match, though, uh, the defeated group look to embrace, but Trent blindsides George Cassidy with a running lead, leaving Chucky Taylor, Chuck t- just absolutely confused, doesn't know what to do. Uh, he he wants to go get in the van with Sue, but Trent's very mad. So Sue. we don't we don't know what's gonna happen. Um, but but Trent's a Trent's a heel. That's all we know for sure. And I don't hate it. He was a great no. heel in, in in New Japan. Uh, so I think they could do wonders for this. Do wonders with it. Roll with it. Speaking of things they roll with, uh, Tony Storm was on commentary for her number one contenders match, Thunder Rosa versus Maria May. Uh, She ends up winning with the Tijuana Bomb, and we come full circle at Dynasty. Good match. Um, Maria May is awesome. She makes everybody else look lazy. I mean, like, I don't know what's going on. She still has stardom in her blood like nobody's business because she has a work rate above everybody else. So I was kind of hoping we'd get to swerve, but... When she uh, eventually Tony breaks Tony. out on her own, she's going to be good. She really is. She really is. So uh, backstage, Alex Abrahantes uh, and Penta challenge Adam Copeland for the TNT title next week. They say he needs gold because he has zero fear, which I don't think that's a good enough reason to have gold. But hey, whatever. I think a argue. good enough reason is he hasn't had any for a while. That's, let's go with that one. That one makes a whole hell of a lot more sense. And to close out the show, we have the in-ring contract signing for the World Championship at Dynasty Samoa Joe and Swerve Strickland. Joe signs almost instantly before giving a direct warning to Swerve. Uh, fires back, clearly not intimidated. We get a whole uh, shot at Diddy. I'll leave you so shook. You think you woke up in Diddy's apartment, in Diddy's house? We just you, we're not supposed to talk about Diddy right now. We're not supposed to talk about <laughs> Diddy, but he did. That's why Joe is the man. After Swerve taunts Joe and Joe gets physical, Swerve tries to choke him with the chain, but Joe just muscles up, easily escapes, beats the living shit out of him with it, leaves Joe up the ramp, bloodied, beaten. Swerve laughs, signs a contract in his own blood, and an enraged Joe runs back, drops Swerve through a table with the urinage. The match that they're going to have in three weeks' time is going to be something to remember. And it is going to be an excellent crowning moment for Swerve. Yeah, this that closing segment I think saved the whole show. It did. Um, but we've still got what three weeks? Did you say till D- Dynasty, 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 whatever you come from, Dynasty? It's like the twenty first or whatever. Yeah. Like tomatoes, tomatoes. Um, and yet this felt like a go home segment. It did. So like. 
did if they're doing a segment like that for a pay per view that's still three fucking weeks away. I'm I'm expecting a lot of good stuff from the next couple of weeks, especially for this feud. Oh, and I'm sure we'll get it. I'm sure we'll get it. Who else is this? Is there anybody as menacing as Joe? I didn't mean to cut you off here, but in all honesty, is there anybody as menacing as Joe? Joe, Joe is just like the perfect guy to put your world title on. And he's so good at everything he does, you ignore the whole, oh, he's a fat guy. I don't give a shit. He'd fucking murder you and then eat your and then eat your flesh. Um he is probably the only person who can talk CM Punk off a ledge. Oh, bingo. Perfectly put. <laughs> Perfectly put. Yeah. What what was the direct quote? Get your ass out there and wrestle. Right. Even Punk ain't fucking with Joe. Mm-hmm. And 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 Punk will shoot his mouth off at anybody. <laughs> Not that guy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I fucking love Joe. Um, <clears throat> and if there wasn't so many deserving people, I would keep the world title on him forever because he's just a perfect world champion. Um, he's, he's the but, perfect bad guy champion. Yeah, but but it's definitely Swerve's time. Um, and obviously we'll predict that in a couple of weeks. But speaking of predictions, we're going back to the NXT round now because Beer is here to predict, stand, and deliver. All right. Hey guys, this is Beer. This is your NXT Stand and Deliver prediction that round. Now, we've got seven matches advertised for the show. One of them is going to be on the pre-show. Um, so we're going to dive our teeth straight into it. So on the pre-show, it's going to be Sean Spears against Joe Gacy. Um, Gacy's been good since turning face, but I think Spears needs the win. Um, so hopefully this can develop Sean Spears going into a... Um, Go into a bit of a, um, so what I'm looking for. Hopefully try and get him towards the championship picture. I would probably say the North American championship might be a good start for Sean Spears. But we'll have to see. I mean, uh, I'm a fan of Sean Spears. I think his presentation since come back has been absolutely perfect. We're going to start with the NXT Tag Team Championship match. We've got Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker defending against Axiom and Nathan Frazier. Now, are Breaker and Corbin taking the belts with them to SmackDown, I don't think it would make any sense for me. I think uh, Breaker's finishing after this. Corbin, I'm not sure what they're doing. Is Corbin going to just turn heel on, on Breaker, and then Breaker's going to go into one of the top baby faces on the roster? I think that's what may happen. So I'm going to go with Axiom and Fraser to win the Tag Team Championships. We've got a six-woman tag match. We've got Thea Hale, Fallon Henley, and Kalani Jordan against JC Jane, Keanu James, and Izzy Dame. I'm looking forward to this because I'm a fan of JC, Kiana, Izzy, and Jasmine Nix. I hope she gets my son. I'm a huge Jasmine Nix guy. And uh, I think it's going to be Thea, Fallon, and Kalani will get the win. I think Thea will be the one pinning JC in the middle of the ring. After obviously, the way JC's been, typical JC Jane sort of stuff. And, uh, well, I think that's going to I think Thea, Fallon, and Kalani will get the win. Now we're going to the North American Championship. Triple threat match between Oberfemi, Dijak, and Josh Briggs. I'm thinking Oberfemi will retain. Uh, I think it's a no-brainer. I love Dijak, but I think it is going to be Oberfemi. Now, there is unconfirmed rumours, by the way, that uh, Josh Briggs has been involved in uh, something. I don't want to say what it is. If you want to look on Twitter, it is all over Twitter. You can go and take a look if you wish. Obviously, um, viewer description discretion really but i'm not saying it on the show because i don't want no one getting in trouble as well as myself and any of the of, of the guys so if you want to take a look you can go and take a look for yourself now we're going to the match that i cannot wait for the most it's going to be the women's championship between lyra valkyria and roxanne perez roxanne perez is the hottest thing right now in nxt since turning heel she has fucking smashed it she has literally hit a fucking home run. She's doing it for fun. And uh, I'm a big fan of the new Roxanne Press. I think Roxanne's going to win. Um, it's literally like going to be like the new uh, women version of Drew McIntyre. And she is 
killing it. It was sadly supposed to be Cora Jade in this position, but obviously Cora unfortunately went down with injury. So um, it is going to be Roxanne for me. I think Tatum's going to turn on Lyra, and then we can have her. It's just like the storytelling between this is going to be good. So I think Roxanne will win the championship. Speaking of championships, we're now going to go into the NXT Championship. We've got Ilya Dragunov defending against the dawn of NXT, Tony D'Angelo. I'm a big Tony D guy. I'm a massive Tony D'Angelo fan. I think Ilya's going to retain. And I think Ilya's going to hold the belt, I think, till maybe Battleground. And I think Ilya will drop the belt maybe to someone maybe tricked. But I have heard little rumours saying that Ilya is set for a call-up. And he's going to get a monster push. What I've heard, I'm not naming the names, but I will get to my top source, who I usually go to for any inside scoops or anything, and uh, we will find out. I, I think Ilya will retain. Uh, Tony D, I think Tony D will, as a heel, be great. But we'll have to see. Um, if Tony D wins, I won't be too disappointed. And now we're going to the main event of the night. We've got Carmelo Hayes. And Trick Williams. Wow. I would never thought I'd be saying that 12 months ago. These two best friends. Trick, the most over guy in NXT. Carmelo Hayes, for me, pound for pound, the best wrestler in NXT. Um, I think Trick's going to win. Um, I think it's Carmelo Hayes' farewell to NXT. Uh, the guy's too good now. Him and Breaker have been ready for at least over 12 months. So, for me, Trick's going to win. Um, Melo will go to Raw. I... I think he'd be better on Raw because obviously Breaker going to SmackDown and Camel Hayes on Raw. You will be in for some bangers. So anyway, that's my predictions for Stand and Deliver. Um, UK time, it's at 5 p.m. It's an early time, obviously because WrestleMania is on the same day. Um, American times, I'm not 100% sure. You'll have to check with Mo on the show on um, Thursday. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So um, peace out. And uh, I will be on the show um, next week as well, because I will be doing my um, results show as well for stands of it as well as NXT. And so anyway, Shawn Michaels has got some cooking. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you very soon. Juices. This is a weird take I'm going to take. Mercedes being on there last night. I actually predicted that Mercedes' first title to go for was going to be the TBS title. Everyone was all taking the piss. So I thought, yeah, Mercedes is going for the TBS title. What was happened? I can predict that. Yeah. But what about this ranking system then? <laughs> oh, know. they keep forgetting about the fucking ranking system. They already system. got rid of it. <laughs> According to Uncle Dave, they brought it back to get rid of it. I think they brought it back just for the Swerve and Hangman feud. Yep. Because obviously they both ended up on top and it's like, okay, fuck it, we'll have a triple threat. But, uh,. All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us for two epic nights here at Promo Mania. It is our biggest and most stressful week of the year, but we love every minute. And as you may have guessed, our next special event is Full House. It comes your way May 30th. And, of course, it comes complete with AEW Double or Nothing predictions. Oh, good God. I love it. And as you heard earlier, the Knowledge Championship match is official for Full House. The new champion, the Phoenix, will defend against the mercenary Chris Reed in full trivia mayhem. Damn right, let's do it. And uh, as you also heard earlier, Anon Mascaras is not Travis Anderson, as he made clear on night one. But whoever he is, has now officially challenged Beer himself for a promo exhibition at Full House. Will we finally find out who is the man behind the mask? And also, there's two other guys behind masks now. we got three motherfuckers. Running around Great. in mass. They call themselves Legion. Go to maxrussingnet.weebly.com slash fullhouse for more information. Yo, it's like the three ninjas. <laughs> uh, anything else to say to Mascaras while you're here? Bring your little bitch ass on and bring your two boyfriends with you. Hey. All right. Uh, and with all that said, and beautifully said, if I might put, let's see if anybody has the cojones to answer the captain's challenge. It is Promo Mania Open Challenge. Who wants to dance with the cat?
here we are on the grandest stage. Simon and his three friends and a few thousand people in India are watching. The world stands still. It holds its breath. For the captain versus... Well, shit. Ladies and gentlemen, we are one step from glory. That's the tagline for Promomania 9. One step from glory. And that's exactly what you all were. Somebody. Anybody. You had the opportunity. One step from glory. I could have given you a Promomania moment. But unfortunately, as you can see, not one of you cocksucking needle dicks stepped up to the plate. You see, not making a decision is a big decision. Did I issue an open challenge? I'm pretty sure that's what I said, because I was there when I said it. And it was an honest challenge. I was dead fucking serious when I asked. So take a seat, people. Seriously, we're going to be here for a while. Because I am extremely dis-a-fucking-pointed. See, I'm the big swinging dick in this world. I've been for a long time. But it seems people are forgetting that. So now, I'm going to have to swing a little harder and faster until I take off like a fucking helicopter. By not accepting my challenge, I stand here feeling as useless as a fingerless eunuch in fuckfest February. Someone give me a goddamn challenge. <clears throat> and by the way, I sure as shit hope that I am not offending anybody with this colorful language. See, I applaud Chris Reed for having Harry Beach Balls to challenge me. And last week he had his reward. But do I sound angry? I must sound angry with all this cursing because I am fucking enraged. I'm out here trying to play my dick is bigger than yours. And everybody else is playing Timmy the Timid Tiger. What do I have to do to get a rise out of somebody? I feel like this promo that I'm cutting right now is me shoving Viagra down everybody's throat because somebody out there needs to man the fuck up. But I think I understand the problem. I have faced and beaten everybody. Not only have I beaten everybody, but everybody has their own shit going on this week. So maybe the problem is that I have seen it all, done it all, bought the t-shirt, and now I sleep in it. Maybe what we need is fresh blood. So if there is anybody out there, anybody at all, that wants to join our little community, come on in. Guns are blazing if you want. I will welcome you with open arms. Get you home safe and hell. I'll even feed you spaghetti. Now who the hell is interrupting me? I thought I was having a moment, you little asshole. Ronnie, I'm told that you're at your first promo mania. How do you feel? Rodney, I'm told that you're at your first promo. Listen here, okay? My name isn't just Rodney. My name is Rodney Slabovich. Because that's exactly what I'll do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and as far as being... At my first ever promo mania, I gotta say, I feel great. <laughs> There's so much happening around here. I mean, how did I get backstage in the first place? But you know, I don't know what that video was. Who is that crazy white man talking about dicks and all kinds of balls in his hand? Oh, that motherfucker's crazy. You know what else I've seen around here that's crazy? I saw some man talking about how much he loves cinematic promos. He just can't get enough. Daniel Crimmins, I think they called him. <laughs> you know what? We're going to make a lot more of those for him because it seems to make him really happy. And don't even get me started on our generous, generous King Cypher. Oh, yeah. He's given us all a gift that's going to take care of all the little problems around Max Wrestling. Ha, ha, ha. Okay? Because some of these people that are around here are weak as fuck. But it's okay. There's a savior coming. And Rodney Slapovich is going to make sure that Max Wrestling gets that savior. But I gotta warn you, it's a monster. It's a monster that's coming for all your souls. Ha 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 ha! So hide your kids and hide your wife. Cause nobody is gonna be protected from this motherfucker. <laughs> okay, okay, listen. I'd love to keep sitting here and chatting with you. But I gotta go over here and have a conversation with somebody that you don't need to know about. <laughs> Enjoy Promo Mania. Ha ha ha! Ha! Ha ha! 
shit. God damn. Buddy, it's so good to see you. Crazy. <laughs> Holy crap, you are creepy as shit. That that guy looks oddly familiar. Um Rodney Slavovich was his name. Um we also saw him going into Charisma's dressing room. Um well we know who that is. We saw him brutally torturing the kingpin at Leap of Faith, so God only knows what that means. Um, so that, that wasn't technically an official acceptance of my challenge. I don't know what the hell that was, but I kind of, I kind of want to see more of it. Um, uh, Rodney, Rodney till next time, I guess. Um, you, you have an invite to full house, my friend, but anyway, uh, one more thing to address before we move on. Both beer and cypher scored seven in the iron bank challenge, which means we have a tie. So, um, Due to Cypher currently being the world champion, the decision will be made next week on whether we will have a tiebreaker or if, for the first time ever, we will have co-holders of the Iron Bank contract. We'll find out next week. Um, but let's, before we get to the main event, let's close our segments here with the Twatometer. Oh, God damn it. Expect anything less from a bunch of neckbeard, stinky twats. We'll start with the obvious Ryback, just because he's the oh, there talking shit. For, for not getting a single wrestling booking, uh, this guy's like income, I think, is strictly like TikTok money, which yeah. can't be a lot of money. It can't be a lot of money. Um, so I'll give you a good solid five, just so you make yourself feel special. Um, the biggest elephant in the room, I, well, I wouldn't say elephant, like, hypocrite. Um, that's a whole lot better. Ronda Rousey. Um, I don't understand how you... Well, no, that's not true. Um, I think I said last week that when you were talking shit, that's like, well, yeah, it's kind of typical. You're starting to sound like us. You know what I mean? And for a little bit, that's exactly how I took it. I took it as, you know, you try to sound like a fan. You're upset with the product. You want better from the product. And then this week, you're just... it's a shit, Everything is a shit show. It's a this, it's a that. You're literally just crapping all over everything and you were a part of the same fucking schemes the same fucking shit so it, it, it it's not much fucking different than when you were around so it's like and you're talking shit on it are you talking shit on it because you're mad that you're gone or are you talking shit on it because of other stupid reasons i just i don't know i was uh I, i'm flabbergasted at her a little bit i'm not who am i kidding i'm not she's known for talking shit but to talk shit about the thing that paid you fat money, fat money yes. to do fuck all is, is beside me. So uh, I'll give Rhonda a whopping let's see here. How much she talks shit two weeks in a row. I'll give her 20 points for talking shit two weeks in a row. And then God, was there anybody else on the butt? Fuck like who, who else was just the ultimate shit bag this week? Um, I want to give my team some shit, but then again, they're just found out. That's their own goddamn problem. Um, Damn, tonight. We fucking hate uh, tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. It's going to be one of those. 20 uh, for Ronda. 20 for Ronda. Jeez. Go Two weeks in a row, 10 points, double it up. How you living? That puts her right below Ryback and Tony Khan. This is fantastic. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm trying to think about this whole thing with Ronda Rousey. If Drew Gulak is found innocent, he. Drew- Oh, say. that's right. He has gone out and said that it was an accident. He just caught her drawstrings when he went to shake her hand backstage. I think accidents happen. I should believe him. I don't. I don't. I don't see Drew, Drew Gulak as that kind of. I know, Grant. I don't see any of these guys as that kind of guy. You know what I mean? I, I, take, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. But of all the fucking people, Ronda. You, you know what I mean? You're you're gonna do that shit to Ronda Rousey? Yeah, no, I'm not happy. Not buying it. No, why would you have the balls to do something like that to Ronda Rousey? There's one man. There's one man on this planet that has the balls to probably try to do something that crazy. Um, and he's a UFC fighter. That I'm blanking on his name right now. Not oh, Francis so, Ngannou. So not Brad uh, Maddox. No, no, God, no. <laughs> he, no. 
Like um, all right then. So just two people on the Twitter meter this week. Yeah, just two. All right, let's put some good points on the board. Some mania points on the board with the yeet. Come out. Oh, meter. Yeet. Yeet. Whoa. Do you? Do you feel me? For real. Do you feel him, sir? Do you do? First of all, I am going to give five points to Tony Storm because she cracked me to fuck up on commentary when she delivered the most venom venomous yet posh slur ever when uh Thunder Rose was talking shit at her at ringside and Tony Storm just delivered this perfect oh piss off it's great loved it five points for that motherfuckers um, need to remember that she is not from London, okay? But she no. sounds like she lives and has been born and never has left London. <laughs> she's she's a starlet. Right? Uh, she's from, yeah, she's from New Zealand. Yeah. Awkward. Then she kissed Mariah May and said, you beautiful bastard. Yeah, she yeah. called her a genius. She's, um, she's the uh, fucking best. All right, that puts Tony on 10. Um, Who else I want to give points to... You know what? I'm going to give points to Punk because I'm 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 I mean I'm I'm a self-confessed Punk Mark, obviously, but obviously. every time he does an interview, no ma- he could be telling the complete, brutally honest truth, which he probably is. Let's be honest. But no matter what, people will always jump on and go, "Ah, he's talking shit. He's complaining again." But he's being asked questions, he and he's answering the questions. What do you want him to do? Yeah, what do you want him to do? So, yeah, I'll, I'll give five points to Punk, too. Um, hey. But I am going to give 20 points hey. to the mailman. As you just saw, I had to leave the desk a second ago. This morning, I had a PS2 delivered. And the mailman has just made my fucking day by bringing me the greatest Bond game since GoldenEye. Right there. Nice. Oh, Nightfire, nice. I have not played this motherfucker in over 10. Oh, God. It's been longer. Maybe 20 years. Yep. Apart from so, GoldenEye, Nightfire is the best. Right, when did it come out? Uh, yo, 2003. No. So You're maybe about 15 years ourselves. since I played this game. We, have dated, we just dated the crap out of ourselves for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, Bond games used to be great. That's the second used best one ever made. Used to be being the operative word. Yeah. Oh, is the GOAT. Gold, Golden Eye is a goat. It's dated as fuck, but it's the greatest. You can still so, play it today. I don't care if it's dated. Yeah. So 20 points to the mailman. You have you have made my promo mania, my friend. You beautiful bastard. <laughs> yeah, I'm not giving you a kiss, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you for joining us. I hope we rocked you harder than Amir Costello got rocked into a new gimmick. Sure did. We're about to leave you with our huge world title main event. Ted P. De Niro is the only member of the MDO that Cypher has yet to defeat. Will it be an upset from the glitch in the system or a clean sweep for our world champion? Before we go, let's find out what Host Mo and the TSK have for you pencil neck geeks this week with a roundup of Click This. Oh my goodness gracious. So there's a lot going on. So the, as y'all have seen, it's not one but two episodes of the footy have dropped. The the Max Football Podcast is an official thing. We're going to be back on Friday, manana, dropping uh, a couple of game reviews. Because as, as you can tell, everybody had a midweek game. So we all are going to be in our feelings. I know I still am because goddamn fucking West Ham. Yeah, you heard me, Nicola, but did good, good on you, though. Ooh, um, hey, I don't want to poke the bear too much. That's why I stopped where I did. So you got another Max Footy coming. Um, there is going to be a lot dropping this weekend. I mean this when I say this. If you're listening to it now, hit the freaking notification bell right now. Do it right now because there's a lot coming. Well, again, tomorrow is going to be the next, another episode of the Max Football Podcast. Um, there will be instant reaction videos, at least from myself, regardless of what of, of the uh, of, of of chat or beer here, there will be a a Spurs rant, which will probably be like a first of its kind or whatever. But nice. it'll obviously be under the 
the Matt Footy thing. I just, I we got to get the instant reactions out. So expect at least mine on my part. And then we go to the TSK. We are considering doing predictions. We don't know if we're going to be able to get them in in time because, you know, Saturday, Sunday, that's coming fast. Um, worst case scenario, we will just got your reviews. And we're going to hit you with double the reviews. So you're going to get one Saturday night. You'll get one. So, or I should say so, uh, Sunday night and you'll get one or should say, Sunday morning and then another one on Monday. So we're doubling up. There's a whole lot of coming, a whole lot of coming. So again, stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed to all the fun stuff right here. Follow us on the socials, by the way, the evil Twitter machine, Max Wrestling UK, Captain 512, SMR Podnet, And of course, Max Football Pod. Go follow that one as well where you can come check us out. Come check out me, Beard Chad, where we're talking the footy all the time. We're talking our three teams. The race for the top three or the top four is heated up. We shouldn't go to Europe, but that's a whole different conversation for a different day. So follow us on all those. Check out the beautifully done website, maxwrestlingnet.weebly.com, where you can find all these links and more. And hit the subscribe button. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, the whole shabiggity bang. Come join all the fun. Maybe even you can be an EVP in the chat. Damn right. And one more thing to announce before we go. Obviously, House of the Dragon Season 2 is coming your way in June, hey. which means he may be retired as a promo participant, but DC and I will be reuniting for Throne Zone Season 4 this June. That's a go. So, that's it for us this week. Catch us next week for Postmania Season. Here is your main event. I can't wait to see it myself. You've been watching the Cap and Moe and Beer. Goodbye and good night. Au revoir. Last hope, Teddy. I'm a go and play Night Fire. Yeah. Let you know the mind of Rock America. I live life with a sky. It's my speed limit. It's my world. Y'all just live in it. Scratch that. Matter of fact, you ain't nothing in it. It's my own sure rules in the fifth com. dimension. Diamond shining prime time. Victim of the high life. Living in the fast lane. Now I'm trying to make it right. Sunglasses on before. Now I think I see the light. Blinded by the limelight and what was raised in me. Insanity sanctuary compared to humanity. My feelings is true. You didn't have to be this way. We're brothers. But you killed my brother. My brother. I would never ever do anything to harm my brother. Even when I first started, I would never battle him because I could not see myself saying anything bad about my brother. And yes, he did bring up the fact that you're blind. And that in itself is deplorable. But that is still my brother. Still my brother. This all started. Everything started because of you. Because of you, Queen. It's all your fault. You came in to the MDO. You guys began the feud with Dragon Club. You brought the walker, the shape, or me. You're the reason why I'm here now. wrestling that caused me to ripple and be torn apart 
And for that, this is my home, my domain. They said it would be mine. They said it it would be all of mine. Now you will see firsthand. Because our interactions go far beyond Max, but into the realm of RWT where I was your first battle. Now figuratively speaking, Corey, I will be your last battle. Because after this, you're gonna change. You're gonna know. You're gonna know what what pain feels like and it's the pain. I feel so much sorrow for you understanding that I don't want to do this at all. I don't want to do this. I have to do this. You're the reason. I have to do this. You went against forces that you weren't supposed to pass, and you left them lying. You killed my brother, and you call yourself my brother. Unfortunately for you, Corey. You are a formidable opponent. With that being said, I have to win this battle by any means necessary. And that's why I'm here. Dinero, what can I say? You truly are a glitch in the system, but a bigger pain in my ass. What's wrong with you, Teddy? Like, why will you not let me reign as king? Is it because I took Amir's crown and you're not satisfied with the kingdom I'm trying to build? Or is El Jefe putting you up to this? and making you do MDO business. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Teddy. I already got 2-0 and against y'all. And if I get you to be my third, then MDO's no more. But enough about the MDO. Let's get back to you for just a minute. You have been a headache, figuratively and literally. You have inside my brain just wrecked my nerves. Just... I need you to get the fuck out, Teddy, because it's killing me. It's literally killing me. I'm out here walking with the cane just in case you decide to come at me and, I, I don't know, hack my brain again. Now, I know what you did at the show, Teddy. You cut my mic off. And then you cut me off from the podcast. So that gives me every insinuation to tell you, Teddy, to stop fucking with me or else I'm going to take this cane Shine it up real nice, turn it sideways, and shove it up your psychological ass. But let me calm down. There's no need to get riled up. I already put a mirror in the dirt. He's not coming back. RWT has not stepped up to defend his honor, but you, you have defended his honor in the worst way possible, and that's by fucking with me. You're just not satisfied, Teddy. I don't know why. I don't get it. It's just you seem distracted. You seem off. You seem like you're having a bad day. 
ever since I took what was mine, and that was Amir's crown. Now, I don't know if you're watching this or not, but I got to tell you this, Teddy. It's going to end, and it's going to end tonight. You will not infiltrate my brain no more. You will not give me no more headaches, no more nightmares, no more talks of the demoness, because, oh, my God, the nightmares I have are so wicked that I wake up in a cold sweat, Teddy. I need you to cut it out. I had to stop. I had to stop. The headaches are coming back. <laughs> I've never felt anything like this before. I don't know what's going on or what kind of demonic sorcery is going on here, but this, this promo is going to have to come to an end. I can't take the pain anymore. I just can't. I got to sit down. Oh, God, man. Oh, God, the pain, man, is it's taking over, man. It hurts. <laughs> Get out of my head, Tony. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. Growing in me. The power. I remember. I remember everything. Corey. They told me. Corey. 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 <laughs> They fell for a hook, line, and sinker. They really thought that you could just go out that easily. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I took care of that, you know. We're talking to the new Max World Champion. I'm so proud of you, man. You did exactly what you were supposed to do. You did exactly what we talked about. Congratulations, Teddy. Yeah, no, 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 man. Listen, right now is the time to rest up. Go out and celebrate. We got some big stuff coming. I'll call you later. I can't wait to tell you all about it. All right, we'll talk soon, champ. <laughs>